officer's unexpected discovery while searching for missing child is heartwarming. The sun was just beginning to dip below the horizon, casting long shadows across the sleepy town of Willow Creek. It was a town where everyone knew each other, and nothing out of the ordinary ever happened. But on this particular evening, the peace of Willow Creek was shattered by the sudden disappearance of a little girl. Five-year-old Stella Grayson was last seen playing in her front yard. Her mother, Ruby, had only turned her back for a moment to answer a phone call. When she returned, Stella was gone. Panic set in almost immediately. The town quickly mobilized, neighbors pouring out of their homes to search the little girl who had seemingly vanished into thin air. Officer Jason Bryant was on his usual evening patrol and he received the call. Jason was a veteran officer, well-respected in the community, known for his calm demeanor and dedication to his job. He had been with the Willow Creek Police Department for over 20 years and had seen his fair share of crisis. But nothing prepared him for the gut-wrenching fear that gripped him when he heard that Stella was missing. Stella was the same age as Jason's own daughter, Emily. The thought of something happening to her was unbearable, and he knew that Ruby and her husband, Dominic, must be going through hell. As a father himself, Jason couldn't imagine the horror of not knowing where his child was or if she was safe. He arrived at the Grayson house within minutes, where Ruby stood in the driveway, her face pale and eyes wide with fear. Dominic was on his knees in the front yard, his hands running through the grass as if he might somehow find his daughter hidden there. The sight broke Jason's heart. What happened? Jason asked, trying to keep his voice steady as he approached Ruby. I don't know, Ruby sobbed. She was right here, I only turned away for a second, and then she was gone. Jason took a deep breath, trying to focus. We're going to find her, he said with as much reassurance as he could muster. I need you to tell me everything you remember. Did you see anyone around? Did Stella say anything before she disappeared? Ruby shook her head, tears streaming down her face. No, nothing. She was just playing with her dolls, and then she was gone. Jason turned to Dominic, who looked up at him with a haunted expression. We've searched everywhere, Dominic said, his voice breaking. The yard, the house, the woods behind the house. She's not here. Jason's mind raced as he considered the possibilities. Stella could have wandered off, but she was a smart and cautious child. The idea that she might have been taken was too terrible to contemplate, but Jason knew he had to consider every option. He quickly radioed for backup and began organizing search teams. The entire town was on high alert, and within minutes, dozens of volunteers had gathered, ready to help comb through the woods, the fields, and every corner of Willow Creek. As the search began, the air was thick with tension. The sun had fully set, leaving the town in darkness, illuminated only by the flashlights and the beams of the search vehicles. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, made hearts race with both hope and fear. Jason led a group of volunteers into the dense woods behind the Grayson house, his flashlight cutting through the darkness. The woods were eerily quiet, the only sound the crunch of leaves underfoot. Jason's heart pounded in his chest as he called out Stella's name, praying for some sign that she was nearby. Stella, Stella, it's Officer Stevens. If you can hear me, call out. But there was no response. The woods seemed to swallow his voice, and Jason felt a knot of dread tighten in his stomach. He had been on countless searches before, but this felt different. The stakes were higher, the fear more palpable. As they ventured deeper into the woods, Jason's flashlight caught something unusual, a small shiny object lying in the underbrush. He knelt down and picked it up, his heart skipping a beat when he realized what it was. A pink hair clip, the same one Stella had been wearing that afternoon. Over here, Jason called to the other volunteers, his voice urgent. I found something. The others rushed over, and Jason held up the hair clip for them to see. This is Stella's, he said, his voice tense. She's been here. The discovery renewed everyone's determination, and they pushed forward, moving deeper into the woods. But as the hours passed with no sign of Stella, hope began to wane. The darkness was oppressive, and the cold night air chilled them to the bone. Jason refused to give up. He couldn't, not when a little girl's life was at stake. But as the night dragged on, doubt began to creep in. What if they couldn't find her? What if something terrible had happened? Just as Jason was beginning to lose hope, he heard it, a faint sound, 
almost imperceptible over the rustling of the leaves. It was a soft, high-pitched whimper like a child crying. Did you hear that? Jason whispered to the volunteers around him. They nodded their expressions tense. The sound had come from up ahead, deeper into the woods. Jason motioned for them to follow him, his heart racing as they moved toward the source of the sound. The whimpering grew louder as they approached a small clearing. And then, in the beam of Jason's flashlight, they saw her. Stella was huddled at the base of a large oak tree, her arms wrapped tightly around her knees, her face buried in her hands. She was trembling, her tiny frame shaking with fear and cold. Stella, Jason called out, rushing toward her. At the sound of his voice, Stella looked up, her tear-streaked face filled with relief. Officer Stevens, she cried, reaching out to him. Jason scooped her up in his arms, holding her close as she sobbed into his shoulder. It's okay, sweetheart, he whispered, his own voice thick with emotion. You're safe now. We're going to take you home. As he held her, Jason felt a wave of overwhelming relief. They had found her. Stella was safe. But as he carried her back through the woods, his mind was already racing with questions. How had she ended up here? Why had she wandered so far from home? And then as he looked down at the tear-streaked face of the little girl in his arms, he noticed something that sent a chill down his spine. Stella's hands were clutching something, something small and delicate, wrapped in a piece of cloth. It was too dark to see what it was, but Jason had a feeling that whatever Stella was holding, it was important. He didn't ask her about it right then. She was too shaken, too exhausted, but he knew that when the time was right, he would have to find out what Stella had discovered in the woods that night. Because whatever it was, it held the key to the mystery of her disappearance. The following morning, Willow Creek was abuzz with the news of Stella's safe return. The town, which had been on edge all night, breathed a collective sigh of relief. Stella's parents, Ruby and Dominic, were overwhelmed with gratitude, and the town's residents expressed their support and love for the family in every way they could. But even as the town celebrated, Jason couldn't shake the nagging feeling that something was amiss. He had seen the way Stella clung to that small wrapped object in her hands, and he couldn't help but wonder what it was and why it was so important to her. After ensuring that Stella was safe and settled at home, Jason decided it was time to find out what she had discovered in the woods. He visited the Mitchells' house later that day, bringing along a small stuffed bear for Stella, a token of comfort. When he arrived, Ruby welcomed him with a tired but grateful smile. Thank you, Jason, she said, her voice full of emotion. We don't know how to thank you enough for bringing our baby back. Jason nodded, his heart heavy with the weight of what might have been. I'm just glad she's safe, he said. How is she doing? She's still a bit shaken, Ruby admitted, glancing toward the living room where Stella was curled up on the couch. But she's getting better. She hasn't let go of that little bundle she found in the woods. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems to mean a lot to her. Jason's curiosity was piqued. Do you mind if I talk to her for a bit? He asked. Of course, Ruby said, stepping aside to let him into the living room. Jason approached Stella slowly, not wanting to startle her. She looked up as he came closer, her big blue eyes still wide with the remnants of fear. But when she saw who it was, she managed a small smile. Hi, Officer Stevens, she said softly. Hey, sweetheart, Jason replied, sitting down on the edge of the couch. I brought you a little friend. He held out the stuffed bear, and Stella's face lit up. Thank you, she said, hugging the bear tightly. Jason watched her for a moment, then gently asked, Stella, can you tell me about what you found in the woods last night? Stella's expression grew serious, and she glanced down at the small bundle in her lap. She hesitated for a moment, then slowly unwrapped the cloth to reveal what she had been holding onto so tightly. It was a small, delicate locket, its silver surface tarnished with age. Inside the locket was a faded photograph of a woman holding a baby. The image was old and worn, but the love between the mother and child was evident. Jason's breath caught in his throat as he realized the significance of the locket. Where did you find this, Stella? He asked her gently. In the woods, Stella whispered. I was playing near the big tree, and I saw something shiny in the dirt. I picked it up, and it was this. I didn't want to leave it behind, so I kept it with me. Jason felt a chill run down his spine. This locket was more than just a piece of jewelry. It was a keepsake, a precious memento that had been lost for years. But the question remained, 
who did it belong to, and how it ended up in the woods. Stella, you did the right thing by keeping it safe, Jason said, his voice full of reassurance. This locket is very special, and I'm going to find out who it belongs to. Do you think you can let me hold on to it for a little while? Stella hesitated, clearly reluctant to part with the locket. But after a moment, she nodded and handed it to Jason. Okay, she said softly, but please make sure it gets back to the right person. I promise, Jason said, taking the locket and carefully wrapping it in the cloth again. I'll do everything I can to find out where this belongs. As Jason left the Grayson house, the weight of the mystery pressed heavily on his mind. The locket was clearly important, but how had it ended up buried in the woods? And more importantly, who was the woman in the photograph, and what connection did she have to Willow Creek? Jason knew that solving this mystery wouldn't be easy, but he was determined to find answers. The first step was to identify the woman in the photograph. He decided to start by visiting the town's historical society, hoping that they might have records or photographs that could shed light on the locket's origin. The historical society was housed in a small brick building near the town square. It was run by an elderly woman named Mrs. Porter, who had lived in Willow Creek her entire life. If anyone knew about the town's history, it was her. Jason entered the building, the bell above the door jingling softly as he stepped inside. Mrs. Porter looked up from her desk, her eyes lighting up when she saw him. Jason Bryant, she exclaimed with a warm smile. What brings you here today? I need your help with something, Mrs. Porter, Jason said, holding up the locket. Do you recognize this? Mrs. Porter took the locket from him, her expression turning thoughtful as she examined it closely. She opened it to look at the photograph inside, and a look of recognition crossed her face. This locket, it belonged to Elizabeth Foster, she said softly. She was a young woman who lived here in Willow Creek many years ago. She was a lovely girl, but her life was filled with tragedy. What happened to her? Jason asked, his curiosity growing. Mrs. Porter sighed, her eyes filled with sorrow as she recalled the story. Elizabeth was engaged to a man named William, but just before they were to be married, he was called away to serve in the war. He never returned and Elizabeth was heartbroken. She was carrying their child at the time, but after the news of William's death, she fell into a deep depression. Not long after the baby was born, Elizabeth disappeared. Some say she ran away, unable to bear the pain of losing William. Others believe she may have taken her own life. Jason's heart etched as he listened to the story. And the baby? What happened to the child? No one knows for sure, Mrs. Porter replied. Some say the baby was given up for adoption, while others believe the child may have died shortly after Elizabeth disappeared. It's one of the great mysteries of Willow Creek. Jason stared at the locket, the weight of the past pressing down on him. This piece of jewelry, lost in the woods for so many years, had once belonged to a woman who had known unimaginable pain and loss. But why had it resurfaced now, and what connection did it have to Stella's disappearance? As Jason pondered these questions, a thought occurred to him. If the locket had belonged to Elizabeth Foster, could it be possible that Stella had been drawn to it somehow? Children were often more attuned to things that adults couldn't see or understand. Could there be a deeper connection between Stella and the lost soul of Elizabeth? Determined to find answers, Jason decided to continue his investigation. He needed to find out more about Elizabeth's life and the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. Perhaps, buried in the past, there was a clue that would help him understand why the locket had resurfaced now, and what it meant for Stella. Over the next few days, Jason delved deeper into the history of Elizabeth Foster. He visited the town archives, come through old newspaper articles, and spoke with anyone who might have known her or her family. The more he learned, the more he realized just how tragic her story had been. Elizabeth had grown up in a modest home near the edge of town. Her father had been a respected businessman, but after his death, the family had fallen on hard times. Elizabeth's mother had done her best to keep the family together, but it was clear that life had not been easy for them. When Elizabeth met William, it had been love at first sight. The two were inseparable, and their engagement had been the talk of the town. But when William was called away to serve in a war, everything changed. Elizabeth's letters to him had gone unanswered, and when word came that he had been killed in action, her world fell apart. The town had rallied around her, offering support and comfort, but nothing could ease the pain of losing the man she loved. 
When her child was born, Elizabeth had tried to find solace in motherhood, but the weight of her grief was too much to bear. One day, she simply disappeared. Some believed she had left town to start a new life somewhere else, while others feared the worst. But no one knew for sure what had happened to Elizabeth or her baby. As Jason pieced together the fragments of Elizabeth's life, he couldn't shake the feeling that her story was somehow connected to Stella's discovery of the locket. But how, and why now, after all these years? One evening, as Jason was going over his notes, he received a call from Ruby. Her voice was filled with urgency, and Jason's heart skipped a beat as he listened. Jason, it's Stella, Ruby said, her voice trembling. She's been talking about a lady in the woods. She says the lady is sad, lost, and she keeps asking if she can go back and help her. Jason's blood ran cold. A lady in the woods, he repeated, trying to keep his voice steady. Did Stella say anything else about her? She said the lady is looking for something, or someone, Ruby replied, her voice filled with worry. Jason, I'm scared. What if there's more to this than we realized? Jason knew that children often had vivid imaginations, but something about Stella's description sent a chill down his spine. He couldn't ignore the possibility that there was more to this story than met the eye. I'm coming over, Jason said, grabbing his keys. We need to talk to Stella and find out what she knows. When Jason arrived at the Grayson house, he found Stella sitting on the couch, clutching her stuffed bear. Her eyes were wide with a mixture of fear and curiosity, and Jason could tell that she was still trying to make sense of what she had experienced. Hi, Stella, Jason said gently as he sat down next to her. Can you tell me about the lady in the woods? Stella hesitated, glancing at her parents before looking back at Jason. She was sad, Stella said softly. She was crying, and she said she couldn't find her baby. She asked me to help her, but I got scared and ran away. Jason's heart etched for the little girl, who had been thrust into a situation far beyond her understanding. Did the lady say anything else? He'd asked. Stella nodded, her eyes filling with tears. She said she lost something very special and that she needed to find it. I think it was the locket. Jason's mind raced as he tried to piece together what Stella was telling him. Could it be possible that Elizabeth's spirit had somehow reached out to Stella, drawn to her innocence and compassion? And if so, what did Elizabeth want? Stella, you're very brave, Jason said, his voice filled with admiration. You did the right thing by telling us about the lady. I think she's looking for peace and maybe we can help her find it. Stella's eyes brightened with hope. Can we help her, Officer Stevens? Can we help her find her baby? Jason nodded, his resolve strengthening. I'm going to do everything I can to help her, Stella. I promise. As Jason left the Grayson house that night, he knew that he had to return to the woods. There was something there, something that Elizabeth was trying to find. And if he could help her, maybe she would finally find the peace she had been searching for all these years. The next morning, Jason returned to the woods with a renewed sense of purpose. He was determined to find whatever it was that Elizabeth was searching for, and he was willing to follow any lead, no matter how small. He retraced Stella's steps, starting from the spot where she had found the locket. The woods were still and quiet, the only sound the rustling of leaves underfoot. As Jason walked, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched as if the very trees were holding their breath, waiting for him to uncover the truth. He spent hours combing through the woods searching for anything that might give him a clue. But as the day wore on, he found nothing. Frustration began to creep in, and Jason wondered if he was on a wild goose chase. But just as he was about to give up, he noticed something strange. At the base of an old oak tree, the same tree where Stella had been found, the earth looked disturbed as if someone had recently dug there. Jason's heart raced as he knelt down to examine the spot more closely. The soil was loose and as he dug with his hands, he uncovered a small wooden box, its surface warm with age. With trembling hands, Jason opened the box. Inside, he found a stack of letters, carefully tied together with a ribbon. The paper was yellowed with age, and the ink was faded but the words were still legible. Jason's breath caught in his throat as he realized what he was holding. These were letters from William to Elizabeth, written during his time away at war. They were love letters, filled with promises of a future they would never have. But there was something else in the box, something that made Jason's heart skip a beat. At the bottom of the box, wrapped in a piece of cloth, was a tiny baby's blanket. 
The fabric was soft and delicate, embroidered with the name Grace. Tears filled Jason's eyes as he held the blanket in his hands. This was what Elizabeth had been searching for, the last connection she had to her lost child. The realization hit him like a wave, and Jason knew that he had to do something to honor Elizabeth's memory. He carefully reburied the box at the base of the tree, knowing that it was where it belonged. And then with a heavy heart, he left the woods determined to bring closure to the story of Elizabeth Foster. That evening, Jason gathered the town's residents together at the old oak tree. He had told them about the locket, the letters, and the baby's blanket, and the story of Elizabeth Foster had touched everyone's hearts. As the sun set, casting a warm golden light over the woods, the townspeople stood in a circle around the tree. Jason held the locket in his hand, feeling the weight of the past and the hope for the future. We're here to honor the memory of Elizabeth Foster, Jason said, his voice filled with emotion. She was a woman who knew great love and great loss, and it's time for her story to come to a close. We're here to give her the peace she's been searching for. With that, Jason placed the locket at the base of the tree, beside the box of letters and the baby's blanket. As he did, a gentle breeze rustled through the leaves, as if the very spirit of Elizabeth was thanking them for helping her find peace. The townspeople bowed their heads in silence, each of them offering their own prayers for Elizabeth and her lost child. The air was filled with a sense of closure, and Jason felt a deep sense of satisfaction knowing that he had done the right thing. As the townspeople began to leave, Jason stayed behind, watching the last rays of sunlight filter through the trees. He felt a sense of peace that he hadn't felt in a long time, knowing that he had helped a lost soul find her way home. And as he turned to leave, he heard a soft whisper in the wind, a voice that sounded like Elizabeth's filled with gratitude and love. Thank you. Jason smiled, feeling the warmth of her words in his heart. He knew that Elizabeth and her child were finally together at peace in the afterlife. As he walked back through the woods, the moon rising high in the sky, Jason felt a sense of fulfillment. The mystery had been solved, the past had been honored and the town of Willow Creek had come together to offer one of its own the peace she deserved. And in the end, it was a reminder to everyone that love, even in its most tragic forms, could transcend time and space, bringing people together in ways they never could have imagined. In the months that followed, the story of Elizabeth Foster became a part of Willow Creek's history. The old oak tree where the locket, letters, and blanket had been laid to rest became a place of quiet reflection for the townspeople, a symbol of love, loss, and the power of forgiveness. Stir, who had been at the heart of the mystery, grew up knowing that she had played a part in helping a lost soul find peace. She often visited the tree with her family, laying flowers at its base and remembering the story that had brought their town together. As for Jason, he continued his work as a police officer, but he carried the memory of Elizabeth and her child with him always. It reminded him that even in the darkest of times, there was always hope, and that sometimes, the most important thing we could do was to help others find their way. And so, the story of Elizabeth Foster lived on, a legacy of love that would be remembered for generations to come, a testament to the idea that even in the face of tragedy, there was always a chance for healing and redemption. For in the end, love was the greatest mystery of all, and it was a mystery that would continue to touch the hearts of those who heard it, bringing them closer to one another and to the things that mattered most.